Get in new puppy owners, we're going shopping. Have you started shopping for your new puppy yet? If you've started browsing online or you wandered into your local pet store, you might be wondering, how are you going to afford all of this fun puppy stuff? Well, your puppy probably needs a lot less than you think, but she does need some things. Let's talk about what you really need for a new puppy and when you'll need it. We're gonna start with some of the fun stuff, like the toys. Here's where you can actually save a little money. Young puppies don't need a lot of toys just yet. Sure, the toys are all cute and you're probably tempted to buy tons of them, but I don't recommend buying too many just yet. So I want you to get a few to try out with your new puppy. Get a ball of some kind, like a chuck it ball, that has the holes in it in case it gets stuck in your puppy's throat. And yes, it happens more than you think, which is why I'm recommending it. I want you to get something like a long rope toy to be used as a fetch or a tug toy. And you're definitely gonna get some chew toys that are softer for puppy teeth, like a yak chew or a bennet bone. And then I just want you to stop right there for now. Once you start to get to know your puppy, you'll know more of what she likes to do. And then you can better pick toys for her. I put together a great video on good gift ideas for your puppy if you are really having the urge to shop. Now you can check out more suggestions over there. Don't worry, we still have other fun recommendations for toy type items when we get into the enrichment section coming up in this video. In my opinion, enrichment supplies are way more important and more fun than toys. Next up, you're gonna need some treats. Just note that your puppy might not take treats right away when they first come home and that's normal. She's going through a very big transition when she arrives in your home and most puppies don't eat a lot and don't take treats for the first few days or week. Now you can offer them, but if she's not interested, just save them for a few days later. I like to have a variety of treats on hand. Get some that are a little harder and drier, which are lower in value and good for easy tasks or rewards, like taking out your puppy for a potty break. You can use kibble for this too. I also like something like a Zooks for a medium value. They're a little bit more moist. And I also recommend some treats that are single ingredients, like a dried chicken or turkey. And beef lung or liver, they're usually irresistible for puppies. Just like with toys, your puppy's gonna have some preferences about the treats. These preferences are gonna likely change over time, so don't toss out any treats, even if your puppy doesn't seem fond of them right now. They might be more interesting when your puppy's a bit older. All right, just check that expiration date, though. The higher value treats do expire more quickly than the drier treats. And you can also study up on which human foods are good for treats too. I do like to try out dog safe vegetables and fruits, which are lower in calories, but contain more nutrients. Some favorites in this household are blueberries, peas, carrots, cucumbers, apples, and sweet potatoes. Now plain yogurt without sugar or peanut butter without xylitol, they're gonna also be good for spreading on licky mats or inside a Kong. My pups loved it when I filmed this video on Kong fillers. It'll give you some more awesome ideas. Now don't worry if your pup doesn't go for the Kong right away. She'll probably love it in just a few weeks, but you can try the West Paw Topple, which is actually easier for younger puppies. When giving human foods to your dog, just be sure to always avoid anything with artificial sweeteners like that xylitol. Xylitol is very toxic to dogs. I do want you to introduce new treats one at a time and just wait a few days before offering another one. You're gonna wanna watch for any kind of upset tummy. Puppies have very sensitive stomachs due to underdeveloped digestive systems. And of course, you're gonna need to add puppy food to that shopping list. I just want you to start with whatever the breeder or the rescue is using, and then if you wanna switch to a new food, do it over several weeks. I do want you to talk to your vet or a canine nutritionalist if you're not sure what food to use. Now, I do use this website from the UK as a guide to new food because they've done a great job on researching the types of foods. Ultimately though, the best food is the kind that your puppy loves and is good for him or her. Now, dogs need baths and grooming. So you're gonna wanna get a brush, a comb, nail trimmers, shampoo, and a conditioner if it's not already in the shampoo. Now, you don't have to bathe your puppy as often as you bathe the kids if he or she doesn't need it, but it is good to have these things on hand from day one. Generally, pups need a bath every four to six weeks. Some shorter haired dogs can go longer in between baths. Start the desensitization to the tools needed for grooming shortly after your your puppy settles into your home. Don't wait until you need to use these tools. That's way too late. By introducing the tools and techniques before you need to use them, you're setting yourself and your puppy up for success and less stress. Stress is not on our shopping list. So we've got a few more awesome supplies to discuss here. Puppies have to be taught how to live in a human world. And that means we need to keep them safe and we need to keep our homes and personal items safe too. So we need the puppy to get good rest, go potty outside and be comfortable without us. So here are a few items that you're going to need to help with that process. You need a crate for 
for your puppy's sleeping sessions, which are a lot. The crate should be used for all naps and all nights. Now, this is a lifetime tool for the times that you're away from your home. Even if you invite your pup to sleep in your bed much later down the road, the crate will still be an important part for him or her when you're gone. And the pen is another great tool for puppies who shouldn't have free roam of the home yet, and that could be for the first couple of months. So you're gonna need a place to contain your puppy while they're awake, but when you can't keep your eyes on them. Most of the time, you can discard the pen by the time your puppy turns six months of age, but that does depend a lot on your home and your puppy. I have three dogs, ages nine months, five years, and six years, and they have all graduated out of the pen, but I still keep gates up in my home to section off parts of it. Now you're gonna want some comfort items for when your puppy comes home, including the snuggle puppy and the adaptal plug-in and spray. You're gonna need some items to keep your puppy safe, including a leash, a collar, and eventually a harness. You'll use the collar first, such as when you're taking her out for a quick potty break, but eventually you're gonna wanna teach her how to tolerate a harness for decompression walks, not neighborhood walks just yet. Now the games to desensitize new tools like the crate and the collar and the leash, they're all in our online puppy training program. And and if you started to realize that there are a few more gaps in your puppy training knowledge, you're not alone. Most people get some version of what we call the puppy blues once they realize the work that's involved. Now the training program, it's gonna be a great guide for you if you start to feel that way. Here are a few things you don't need. You don't need pee pads, which will just become a chew toy and teach your puppy to go potty inside on rugs and blankets for a lifetime. I also don't recommend clickers for brand new puppy owners. You can add in one later if you're gonna be moving into more advanced skills like trick training or agility work. And you don't need any aversive tools that are gonna scare your puppy. That includes things like cans of air, the no-pull harness, shock collars, and definitely skip anything that causes pain like prong collars too. Puppies don't learn well when they're stressed and scared and feeling pain. That's why I'm a fear-free certified trainer. And our entire training program is all based on building a strong and healthy and positive relationship with your puppy while teaching him or her some good manners to live in our world. There is simply no need for harmful or scary methods when science proves that dogs learn best from positive reinforcement. For now, you won't need a bed in the crate. But if you wanna have a mat or a bed in the pen, or you can keep an eye on your puppy, that might be okay. Puppies often chew beds, which is why they're not safe for alone time in the crate. But you can introduce a bed in smaller doses when you can watch for unsafe behavior. Now, when Lady came home, I noticed that she always wanted to hang out on a mat when she had a little freedom. So I got a mat for her just for the pen. She loved it. I watched her pretty carefully and she really was never a chewer on those things other than her toys. But some puppies are, so you need to still keep an eagle eye on your new furry friend. All right, now those were all important supplies, but let's not forget the fun supplies needed to fulfill your puppy's enrichment needs. I recommend you have a flirt pole for playing with the puppy, but staying far away from those puppy teeth. This is gonna fulfill your puppy's species typical behavior to chase. This is also a great activity for kids and puppies to do together because the pole allows that good distance between those sharp puppy teeth and your child. I do suggest getting some things for your puppy to lick, like a West Paw topple, a Kong, and also a licky mat. Licking can actually help calm your puppy down and provides a relaxing activity that promotes rest. And you might wanna try a few treat dispensing toys like the Snoop or a bob lot but don't be surprised if your puppy doesn't get the hang of it right away. You can actually teach her how to use those toys. I do have a link to all the items that I'm mentioning in the description below this video for your shopping convenience. And if you wanna go really fancy and your pup loves to dig, you might add in a special toy like the iDig to your toy collection. It's not cheap, but many of our students say it lasts forever and it's a great toy to have in rotation for enrichment activities. Consider picking up a few more fun enrichment items for a puppy obstacle course, like cones, a tunnel, and maybe even a set of puppy stairs. Stairs are important, especially if you have a small dog who will eventually gain access to your furniture. Now, obstacle courses are a great way to work your puppy's brain and body, which is a perfect combination that leads to a good nap. Some of my students love ball pits, which they make with some of the plastic balls and a kiddie pool. And then you can easily repurpose the items for training, like I did in this video about the introduction to water. And the kiddie pool could also be a dig pit. So it's a great investment if you have a puppy. So now that you've got the supply list, you might think that you're all ready. Well, in my experience, you're gonna need a little more info in order to get started on the right paw. Tools, don't teach your dog what you want them to do. 
training does. So in addition to those important tools I mentioned, you'll need some work to teach your dog the important skills like how to alert you to a potty break, how to relax in the crate when you're gone, how to chew on toys and not table legs. I can help you with all that. So you can get started with this video on what to teach your eight week old puppy. And be sure to grab access to my free digital new puppy starter kit. Between the training suggestions and these awesome supplies you'll be getting, you're gonna be in great shape for your new puppy. All right, this is Michelle Lennon and the How to Train a Dream Dog team hopping off for today.